ready for this trip? I mean, as a woman, like, how oh. you for Monte Carlo? <laughs> I mean, I just found my favorite little cocktail dresses, my, the most, I don't know, I borrowed a couple dresses, a friend, this is a friend of mine's, um, she represents, so, you know, I just looked in my closet, and I'm like, okay, Monaco, okay, not Monaco, you know, you just, color, white, fresh, I mean, I don't know, you gotta dress up for Monaco, you can't just, you know, wear jeans, it doesn't work. Like I said, you're wearing it well. You look like oh, you have thank been you. Here before. So, have you been to Monte Carlo in this part of the world before? I have. Um, I used to live here. In fact, yeah, I used to live in Monaco in 1997. I actually danced at the Sporting Club, which is where they're having the gala performance. As a dancer, I was there. We opened for Liza Minnelli and Elton John, and yeah, I was a dancer back, you know, 1997. So it was a while ago, but it was fun. It was great. Three months. I, summer of my life. It was amazing. And does the magic ever go away? I mean, three months is a little longer than the week we spent here. Is there still that magic here at all times? Yeah, I mean, you know, during, this is a lot of activities, but Monaco is quite relaxing. Like, it's not like, a, you know, there's, there's it's, it's about dinners and dinner parties, and the action is in Saint-Tropez. So we would always, you know, take a helicopter to Saint-Tropez and come back and do the show. I can, couldn't do that now, but I did when I was 20. <laughs> Yeah. Different. Did you envision yourself, like, did you have the dreams then of, of coming here for the TV festival? Because that was going on. Now you're here. Oh, did you think this was going to happen, that you would be here for this? No. I mean, I was up there. Well, I came here for 2008 for the Monaco TV Festival. Um, but I, it was surreal because I'm sitting in the audience going, oh, my God, I used to be up there performing for, now I'm, I'm a person actually eating my food and enjoying the with alongside the prince like it was just surreal because you know you're used to being up in front of the stage and now you're a spectator so I felt honored I'm like okay <sighs> I've, I was here and now I'm here so it's good very very cool yeah. well, I'm so glad to have you here what is it like um, for you I know you've been in a number of different things but you wanted to talk about Crooked Arrows yes. um, this film so just talk to me I know, I know what it's about I think it's such an interesting film talk to me about um, how this movie came about and what it's about it's a really uh, spiritual film I'll say that. Um, it's about lacrosse and um, Joe Logan, who Brandon Routh plays, a coach. Um, and he finds himself through coaching this Native American lacrosse team who lives on the, the reservation. And I play the teacher of the, res the kids' Native American language, which was a little challenging for me. I had to speak Sunaquat in some of the <laughs> scenes. It was, uh, yeah, challenging. But um, it's actually a really good film. I mean, it's a it's like a heartfelt, um, spiritual, Mighty Ducks meets the Bad News Bears, exciting film. I'm actually really proud of it. So you have to go see it. Because I was reading about because the film is about lacrosse players and Native Americans. Can you talk about? I didn't know the history of Native Americans and lacrosse and the sport and why that was so important to keep it keep the integrity of that that sport. Well, not many people know that. Lacrosse was created a thousand years ago from the Native Americans. And I don't think a lot of people know that because it's basically in, you know, the prep schools along the East Coast. It started there, originated there, and in Europe, I guess, the girls play it. Um, but yeah, it, it, nobody knew that it was like these Native Americans that actually made the sticks by hand, and that was their sport. And so it actually is, it's, it's a great film because the Native Americans are being recognized for that and amongst other things, so... It's really, it's really a great film. And how did that being here? When you were back, when you were at the festival in 2008, were you, I know you had a guest thing about things today, and a number of different things, right? Why were you here in 2008? Um, oh, I had the Anaconda films coming out. <laughs> the snake movies. Yeah, I had the snake movies coming out, and they were coming out on the sci-fi channel, so I guess that's why I was here. And then I just had done, like, Desperate Housewives, and I can't remember, some other guest stars, so I guess they wanted to have me there for the TV. Yeah. What is the what is the international fan reaction? Are there different types of fans for film and for television? Do you feel like it's like there's a group of fans that are more avid? Than the other? the the Star Trek fans are incredible. They are the sweetest and they're so loyal, and they're the most excited. And they follow you wherever you go. Because I was on Star Trek, so I I can now do you know these Star Trek conventions, which are hilarious, but so cute, you know and. They were just the best fans, so it's kind of nice that I did a little sci-fi because it just keeps that, you know, just makes you humble. Basically makes you appreciate, you really appreciate your work when you have those fans because they're just, 
They're just loyal. Best fans. And I think too, obviously, I know how huge Star Trek is in the states and yeah. how loyal those fans are. Can you just talk about the international community? So when you kind of step outside of the LA world, the Hollywood world, oh. what is that like to meet people from all over the world who've seen you and who are kind of emotionally invested in your characters? And I think well, being here, it's 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 rewarding because you know in Hollywood, it's just you're just another face or, you know, you just feel like you're just one, a number there. But here, they really, I mean, Monaco has made me feel so welcome. And I love coming back here because I used to live here. So um, traveling abroad is so important to me because you got to get out of La La Land and you got to get out of the Hollywood scene and you got to like get back. I go to Canada a lot, which I'm from. So you got to get back to your roots or wherever. Just get out of, into a different culture, I think is important for me anyways, as an actor too. Um, the sporting club, watching, watching the show because it's just like, I don't know. I used to be up on that stage and now I'm invited to the gala, so it's um that's what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah. Any chance like the magic of, of the stage will take over you on Thursday night and you might get up there and start? What do you think? What's gonna I'll probably dance downstairs at Jimmy's. That's usually what I do. I don't get up on the stage. I wouldn't, you know, cause a ruckus. But, <laughs> but no, I'll probably be like, cause you. I mean, last year, I, or 2008, everybody got up. I mean, even the princess fiance was up there dancing, not on stage, but like in, during the show and stuff. So it really, it really gets you going. So then you got to go downstairs and dance at Jimmy's, which is one of my favorite clubs in the world, actually. It's stunning. So really quickly, because you, you talked about the, the movie sounds great, Crooked Arrow sounds like it's super really, like, feel good. It's a really interesting film. Yeah. I, I, I wouldn't say, I, we call it a, like an underdog sports film. Yeah. No, that's generalizing it. Okay, which are always wonderful. But I wonder if you have a moment with Prince Albert on Thursday night and he asks about why he should see your film, what would you tell him? I would tell him that um, it's, it's a feel-good movie because I'm sure he loves sports. He's a guy. And by the way, he seems like a normal guy. You know, he's so down to earth and he's so understated and he's just a nice guy. And I would just tell him, listen, it's, it's, it's about a, it's an underdog movie, it's a feel-good movie, it's a family movie, and it's the Native Americans get their recognition, so there's a lot of spirituality to the movie. So maybe I would tell him it's spiritual. You know? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I have a, a sci-fi movie of the week coming out on the Sci-Fi Channel. Um, I'm not sure when they're releasing it. It's going to call, it's called Ghost Storm with Carlos Bernard from 24. And that's going to come out soon, I think, because I just did some ADR. So sci-fi movie coming out about a ghost in a storm. You know, it's one of those fun <laughs> sci-fi movies. It's good. It's, the CGI on it is good. So, yeah. It's fun. They are. It's, it's, it's really, I, I mean, I'm so glad I'm a part of that because, you know, Sci-fi is going to follow you forever, no matter what you do. And I can always, you know, when I'm 60 years old, maybe they'll still have Star Trek conventions and I can go to them. Hopefully. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Who knows? I could. Oh, yeah, the dancing. The dancing at the sporting club. No. Beyond that. <laughs> well, yeah, because, you know, you, dancers have a short career, you know. It's like five years or six years.